are professional students. Having looked at capital budgeting, the next thing we want to look at now is relevant cash flows. When we are talking of relevant cash flow, relevant cash flows are the cash flows or outflow flow which occur as a result of projects. Understand? The cash flow that result as a result of what? Result of project. All the cash flow, cash flow which occur as a result of project will be the one that will be included in the relevant cash flow. It is sometimes called incremental cash flows. For example, there are certain fixed costs of a project, of fiscal free project that are relevant costs because they have, they only have to be paid if the project goes ahead. Although fixed cost is not normally considered when we are talking about project acceptance. But any fixed cost that occurs as a result of acceptance of any project will be considered as one of the relevant cash flow. So those costs which have to be paid out, whether or not the project goes ahead, is irrelevant. Let's do that. If you have to pay a cost, either a project goes ahead or not, is time what irrelevant. But any cash or any cost you incur as a result of acceptance of any project is relevant cash flow. So the relevant cash flows are the cash flow which should be used for capital investment appraisal purpose. Now, the definition often used for regular cash flow states that they must be cash flow that occur in the future and they are also what? Incremental. They occur in the future and they are what? They are incremental. Now, when I'm talking of cash flow, why on the face of it is obvious not only cost or revenue that give rise to a cash flow should be included. Accordingly, for example, depreciation charges should be what should be excluded in the um, when you are considering a relevant cash flow. Depreciation is not part of it. You have to exclude what depreciation. It is not part of the relevant cash flow because either you are starting a project or not, your property will depreciate at expected value. That is one. Two, we are talking about future. Any relevant cash flow should arise in what? Should arise in the future. So anything that has occurred in the past are known as what? Are known as sunk cost. So in this case, the cost of uh, uh, experiment, the cost of research and development, all those things that has occurred in the past, they are part of the sunk cost and they are never relevant cash flow. That's all that. And now we have incremental as another condition to determine either a cash flow is relevant or not. Incrementals indicates that only cash flow that arise because of the decision being made should be included. So any cash flow that will have arise in any way, sometimes refers to as committed cost, should also be excluded. Committed cost should be what? Should be excluded. But the cash flow that arise because of the decision being made should be included. The cash flow that come up as a result of the decision you made is included. But any cash flow that will have arisen, sometimes referred to as committed cost, is another form of some cost. It needs to be excluded. And the last one is opportunity cost. Why not specifically including in a definition of relevant cash flow? As noted above, the opportunity costs are relevant cash flows. Opportunity costs is what? They are relevant cash flow. So opportunity costs are the revenue that are lost or additional costs that arises from moving existing resources from their current use that are therefore considered to be incremental cash flow arising in the future to be taken into what? Into account. These are the relevant uh, costs in capital budgeting. The honorable students, let's look at what we mean by effect of taxation on capital budgeting. We want to know what the effect income tax has on capital budgeting. How do we treat it? The income tax usually have a significant effect on cash flow of a company. 
and should not be taken with levity. That is, the effect of taxation should not be taken with levity. So, this effect, the tax as an company should be taken into account while making capital budgeting decision. So, an investment that looks desirable without considering income tax may be unacceptable, unacceptable after considering income tax. Now, let's proceed with after tax benefit or cash inflow. Taxable revenue or cash inflow when reduced by the income tax are known as after tax benefits or after tax cash inflow. And when income tax is considered in capital budget decision, after tax cash inflow is used. So an example of taxable cash flow is cash generated by company from its uh, operations. And after tax benefit or after tax cash inflow can easily be computed using this formula. That is, after tax benefit or after tax cash flow is equal to what? It's equal to one minus tax rate multiplied by taxable cash received. One minus tax rate multiplied by taxable cash uh, receipt. You can write it this way. That is, after tax benefit is equal to the benefit multiplied by one minus tax. So that is a uh, on that. For example, XYZ company guarantees 10,000 cash from its operation. This is ordinary cash flow. So the taxable rate of income is 30%. Compute it after tax. You can see the tax, the, the, sorry, the cash flow is 10,000. The tax is 30%, so compute one minus 30%. So we have what? We have 7,000 as our taxable income or after tax uh, benefit. But if you do not consider tax, we think that entire 10,000 is for the business. No, there are some statutory obligations that needs to, needs to be or that needs to be met, which is tax. So if that was not considered or not properly considered, there will be a problem with the cash flow. That's it on that. And the second part is after tax cost. You know, when it is cost, you have to also consider tax on it. Because that's deductible cost reduce a taxable income and help saving income tax. A cost net of its tax effect is known as what? After tax uh, cost. So after tax cost can be computed using same formula like one we used earlier, which is one minus tax rate multiplied by taxable cash expenses. Example, a company wants to start training a training program which we call 50,000 Naira. So the training program is a tax deductible cost for the company. And the after tax cost of the training can be calculated after applying 30% uh, benefits. And how do we do this? Solution is, what is taxable cost is 50,000 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.3, which is tax. So it is equal to 0 0.7 and 50,000. So the, the cost is now 35,000. So that is what the company will pay. So this is it. It's 35,000. So that is how the income tax affects cash flow in the capital budgeting. Now, don't student, let's use this uh, past uh, sample to illustrate the effect of tax on capital budgeting. If you assume that the tax is what? The tax is 30% as we have illustrated. I want to find out what is the after tax profit here. Now, it will be what? We have 1 minus 0 0.3 for year one 
times 4. So after times profit will be what? Will be 0 0.7 times 4, which is 2.8. So we have 2.8 dollar here. Second year will also be 2.8 dollar. Top here will be 1.4 dollars. Fifth year will be also be so the fourth year will be 1.4 dollars, and the last one, which is one dollar, will be 0.7 dollars. So this is what we now use to determine either a project is worthwhile or not. So it is now you apply your discount cash flow and you find out your net present value or you find out your present uh, value. So that is uh, how tax uh, affect cash flow. You see that before tax it was 4, but now after tax it becomes about 2.8. If one fails to consider tax, tax might make this project not what? Not acceptable again, in the sense that once we are in a particular community, there are statutory obligations we have to fulfill. Among them is tax, so you can't dodge away from it. So for you to run away from it is as good as you are getting out of the business. So whatever decision you want to take, you must always factor in tax relevant in that uh, situation. So that is um, on that.